Circuit breaker is one of the most important element in a microservices architecture. Suppose we have two microservices, one is order service and one is payment service. And order services internally call payment services to complete the payment. Now let's say user fires in a request to the order service to place an order. That request will get assigned a thread from the servlet thread pool. Now this thread will do the job of invoking any other services which order services want to invoke. So in this case, order services wants to invoke payment service. So this thread will go ahead and invoke the payment service and they'll get back a response if payment service is working correctly. Now as the payment services has returned back a successful response, this thread which was occupied in communicating this uh, request to the payment service will get freed and it will be available for any other request. Now let's say payment service is down and payment service is not able to serve any more request but the order service does not know that the payment service is down. So what it will do, whenever a new request will come into the order service, it will assign a thread and that thread will go to the payment services but that payment service will not return a response so that thread will be occupied and it will be waiting for the response from payment services. Likewise, for any subsequent request, this will be the case that the, those threads will uh, again get queued up and will get occupied with the payment services and waiting for the response. So let's say there is a huge peak time and in that case, it's very unlikely, but let's say, let's assume the number of requests is so high to the order services that all the requests which order services was receiving was assigned a thread from the thread pool and eventually all those threads will get occupied because the payment service is down and in that case, no thread will be again available to execute any more request. So what will happen in this situation? That order services also will not be able to serve any more request because there is no more thread left in the thread pool, right? So what will happen? Because of this scenario, it will lead to a cascading failure. That failure in one service can actually transmit that failure to other services as well in a microservices architecture. Suppose we have a payment service, which is the most used service in a microservices application, for example, if you look at this particular diagram, we have card services, which is calling payment service. We have order services, which is calling payment services. And we have offer services also, which is calling payment services. Now let's say due to some reason, payment service is down. Any request which is coming to payment services, that will also get affected. And if we consider that very unlikely scenario of uh, all the threads being consumed, then in that case, card services will stop working because there is no thread left. All the services will stop working and offer services will stop working eventually. So this is how a cascading failure in a microservices architecture looks like. Now, what will be the solution for this to stop this behavior? Because in a microservices architecture, it's very likely that there will be an intermediate failure in some of the services. But in those situations, we can't bombard the request to those services which are not responding back. So what can we do? First, we can stop the communication between the service which is not working and second instead of invoking that particular service which is down we can return back with a default message saying that the service is down please try again after some time or some kind of a uh, failover default message once a request comes to order service what we'll do we'll place a kind of mechanism in order services itself that will intercept the request which is going away from the order service so now let's say this is the request interceptor okay and as soon as a request comes to order service, that request will be assigned to a thread. Now that thread will go and pass through request interceptor. So as the request interceptor will receive a request, it will allow this request to the payment service and payment services will return back with the response. And the same response will be returned back to the order services. There is no disruption with any of the services. What this request interceptor will do, it will keep track of how many requests were successful and how many requests were failed. So after this transition is complete, this request interceptor will increment the value of successful response and will uh, keep the track of how many requests were succeed and how many requests had failed. So now the success count is one. Now again, one request comes, this goes to the request interceptor. This request interceptor again allows it and it returns back with the successful response and it will increment the count to two. Let's say we have had 10 transactions and out of those 10 transactions, three has failed. Now, if another request comes to order service, that request will go to request interceptor. This request interceptor based on some threshold percentage will check whether this call should be allowed to the call services or not. Let's say we have configured our request interceptor in such a way that last end transaction, if 30% of last end transaction were a failure, then this should not allow any more further call to the payment service. So what it will do since we have three failure out of 10 transaction, so it reaches the 30% of the limit. So it will not allow any more request to payment service. Instead, what it will do, it will stop that request here and it will return back with the default response. And what it will do, now request interceptor knows that there is some issue with the payment services because the 30% of the previous transaction got failed. So now it will block all the requests coming back for a certain time period which we have configured.
Now after that predefined wait time period is over. Now what this request interceptor will do, it will allow us partial request from the order service to the payment services, assuming just to check whether payment services is up or not. So as soon as a request comes to this uh, request interceptor, this will allow partial request, right? So out of let's say 10 requests, it is allowing three or four requests to go to the payment services and, re and rest of them return back with a default message saying that payment service is done. But those few requests which was allowed partially from by this request interceptor will go and invoke payment service. Now there is there can be two situations. Either the payment service is up and working again or the payment service is down. So if the payment service is still down, it will again receive back a timeout exception or uh, any unsuccessful response, right? So those thread will not get a response back. And in that case, what it will do, it will again go back to the previous stage, which is the stop stage. But let's say that the payment service is now up and it is working as expected. Now, as will this request will go, this will return back with a successful response and it will return back the response of the order services. Now, let's say after consecutive subsequent request, which was allowed partially, the successful response count has increased. Now, let's say there are couple of more successful res uh, response transaction has happened then in that case what it will do it will again check whether this particular last end transaction how many of the transaction got failed so in that case out of three transactions we have uh, seen that all the three transactions has succeeded so this request interceptor will assume that okay this is below the threshold so the payment service is up again now it will allow all the requests again so this is the whole circle wherein this request interceptor will intercept all the requests which is coming to request interceptor and based on certain threshold it will allow or disallow those requests assuming the call service is up or down and then if the call service is down it will cut down the request and return back with a default message so this mechanism of having a request interceptor in the call caller service is known as circuit breaker right so as the name suggests circuit breaker is just to break the circuit or break the connection between two microservices so to avoid the cascading failure in a microservices architecture in a circuit breaker, in a normal circuit breaker, in a microservices architecture, we have three states. Initially, our circuit breaker is in closed state. Now, it will keep a track of failure rate. So, as soon as the failure rate reaches a threshold or above a threshold, the, it will switch uh, back to an open state. Right? In this open state, it will not allow any more requests to go or pass through. Now, in this open state, what it will do, it will wait for a certain duration. It will disallow all the requests which is coming. Now, after that certain, after that wait duration is over, it will switch to a third stage which is half open stage now this half open stage is nothing but what we discussed as partially allowing stage wherein some of the requests are allowed right and those requests are allowed only to check whether the faulty service is up and working again or not and if the faulty service is still down or if the failure rate is still there then it will again go back to the open state which will not allow any more further request but let's say after certain duration when the circuit breaker is in half open stage and after allowing some partial request, all of the partial request is passing and the service is up again. So all of the partial request is passing. So, uh, so within a certain time period or within a certain request, if the failure rate is below the threshold, then what it will do, it will switch back to a closed state. So from half open, it can go to either open stage or it can go either to closed state, right? And this closed state means the service is, the party service is up and working again. And now we can allow the transaction to happen between those two services. Now Spring provides two kind of uh, circuit breaker. One is Netflix Hystrix and the other one is Resilience 4J. Netflix has mentioned that they will not provide any support for Hystrix. So Spring is basically keeping this Hystrix in a maintenance mode and there will be no support provided for uh, Hystrix. So Spring has recommended to go ahead with uh, Resilience 4J for any circuit breaker implementation henceforward. So in the next video, we will see how we can implement a circuit breaker in a Spring Boot application with the Resilience 4J. Till then, happy coding. Bye-bye.